Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News. Yes, another exciting video brought to you because I love you guys and you guys are always there for me. Ha <laughs> ha. So, on part one, uh, I showed you guys how to install Exchange 2013 with uh, Server 2012. Uh, today, guys, I'm going to show you how to uh, do Pro installation configuration tasks that you probably need to do to get yourself up and running okay so this is actually a part two so I have the internet browser up and running and within the exchange box as you can see it's my box my BJ dash exchange 2013 box and within the browser I'm going to do a local host forward slash ECP hit enter and if everything goes well I am going to get the web access app version so I'm going to continue the website and there you go. I got the Outlook web app. So you're gonna log. I'm gonna log in as an administrator, and you're basically logging into this uh, account or whoever has administrative admin or administrative exchange uh, access to your exchange server. So uh, this is the very first time me doing this. So it wants me to change the time zone. So my time zone in Eastern time for you is probably something different. We're going to hit save. Okay, so we're finally signed in. And the first thing that you would normally want to do is enter your Exchange 2013 server product key. So to do that, you want to go into the server section. You want to select the server, most likely the server that you're in. Uh, and then there goes the little option to enter the product key. You enter your product key and you enter your valid product key. Now. Because I'm testing this out, I really don't need to do this at all, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm only testing this out. I'm not going to be running a full-blown Exchange Server 2003 in my lab environment, but I'm just showing you guys where to go. Now, once you enter your product key, you want to uh, restart your machine. You could, uh, you could restart the server or you could go to services and then restart um, Microsoft Exchange Information Store Services. Okay, so again, I'm gonna repeat it. Once you enter your product key, you can either restart your server, or you could go to Services, locate Microsoft Exchange Information Store Services, and then restart that. Okay. Now, the next thing that you guys want to do is you want to take care of the Exchange 2013 create a default send connector alright so I'm gonna cancel this and uh, without configuring a send connector your outbound internet distant mail will sit on the outbound queue with the following error you're basically gonna get an error like saying a matching connector cannot be found to route the external recipient so you really don't want that error so you need to create your your default send connector. So the way that you do it is you want to go into mail flow and send connector. You want to click the plus sign because you're adding a new one. Uh, give it a name. So I'm going to give it default default send, right? That makes sense. And you want to pick internet, for example, to send internet mail. Got it? And we're going to hit next. So what I'm going to do here is I'm doing an MX record. And I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna click on add. And from here, you want to do is an asterisk. Hit save. Hit next. You wanna hit add. You wanna select your exchange and then make sure this is selected. Press OK. And then hit finish. So, huh, I had to pause the video, guys, because I've been having a lot of issues with Internet Explorer, so I had to use Firefox. Can you believe it? An IE product, which is Microsoft product, doesn't work well with Microsoft Exchange, which is also a Microsoft product, well, whatever. So, huh, uh, let's add a domain name as an accepted domain. So, the way that we do that is within the mail flow, we want to go to accepted domains. Uh, by default, you already have one, but let's say you want another one. So let's say uh, BJ Tech News is the one that you want. Well, this is for me. For you, is going to be a little different. So let's say I want bjtechnews.edu. Uh, we're going to hit save. And we have added another accepted domain. Now, you will con continuously do this for other domains that you want 
uh, to be accepted with your exchange server 2013 but you, you get the gif now let's add a new email address to the default email address policy now to do that we want to go into the mail flow which we are already in and we want to go into email address policies with the default policy selected once it loads up there we go we want to edit so the way that we edit we're gonna hit that little pencil hit the pencil to edit then we want to go to email format we want to click on the add button make sure that you check make this format the reply email and then switch change the accepted domain to bjtechnews.edu or whatever accepted domain you want the email format to be you have to repeat for each additional email you want to apply to your users but only one can be the reply address okay guys so understand that and once we are completed we want to hit save and hit save again you're probably gonna get a warning saying after you save if the status of the right panel of the email address list list shows not apply please click apply link to update the policy so we gonna press OK so again as you can see it's unapplied and we need to click apply uh, another warning we're gonna hit yes and it's gonna apply the policy and we're gonna close and it's applied uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video which is part two on part three I'm gonna continue my journey of showing you guys how to configure Exchange Server 2003. Uh, please give me likes. Please comment if you have any feedback on this video. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out!